Hey everybody, this is Jacob from RoboFlow here today to talk about machine learning frameworks. So today we're going to break down machine learning frameworks into their common categories. And then we're going to talk a little bit about how these machine learning frameworks are designed to run specifically on various types of hardware. Um, so now we're going to just go ahead and dive in. So the different types of machine learning frameworks I've split out here into three different types. There's training frameworks, intermediary frameworks, and deployment frameworks. And so what exactly are the difference between those frameworks? So in machine learning, you have training where you're actually going to be teaching your model how to model a problem. And then you also have deployment where you're going to be putting your model into production so it, it can infer at a fast speed. And the intermediary, intermediary framework is actually a framework that's used to kind of convert between these. And so why are there so many frameworks and um, why are they, you know, split into these different types? So in training, when you're actually teaching the network, you're going to be back propagating through the network. That means as you're going through and making matrix operations through the neurons in, in your deep learning model, you're going to also have to be calculating the gradient or the derivative of these functions and these operations in your model to be able to then make an efficient back propagation back through the network. So that's why training models are often a lot heavier of a type of framework and there's actually a lot more infrastructure behind them because they have to find a way to go through this back propagation process very quickly as well as forward propagation will to make a pass forward through the model to make a prediction. Now, the advantage that deployment frameworks have against these training frameworks is that they don't have to implement any of the logic to do back propagation or training. They can just say, okay, we know we have a model frozen in time here and we just need to be able to make the operations to make a forward pass, making forward calculations through the model. And we don't have to think about all the ways to go back through the model through gradient descent to be able to go through the, the training process. So that's where the fundamental division uh, comes up. And then now, the reason why these, model, these frameworks are split into so many different pieces is because there's also hardware to be considered. And then there's also people's um, preferences and the kind of frameworks that they like to use and the way that they uh, prefer the software to be written. So now we're going to kind of dive into the common training frameworks. So first off here we have PyTorch. Um, PyTorch is um, one of my uh, favorite frameworks. Um, it's written in sort of like a NumPy-like um, uh, style. So when you're working through it, it kind of feels like you're working um, almost in NumPy, except with this uh, back propagation ability to be able to back propagate through your network. And you're seeing a lot of um, research these days now is coming out in PyTorch. Another big advantage of PyTorch is it has a very fast training time. So this means that it's highly optimized to run on GPU. Um, and can, you can really accelerate some of your training, your training pipelines um, when, when writing them in PyTorch or using models that are based um, in PyTorch. The next one is TensorFlow. So, TensorFlow definitely was sort of the first one out of the gate and gained the most popularity and a lot of people use it. It has a notion of a uh, inference graph that you can build and then you can start the inference graph and run through it. That was TensorFlow 1.0. TensorFlow 2.0 is designed with eager execution. So um, these things kind of run a little bit more um, serially like they do in PyTorch. So then you don't have to think about like first building this inference graph and then running through it. Um, definitely probably one of the most popular uh, machine learning frameworks and oftentimes um, people will think that TensorFlow is really the only place um, to do things but hopefully um, watching this video if you're only used to using TensorFlow this this video might help open up your mind to all these kind of other frameworks that you could be using. Next one I put on here is uh, FastAI. This one's gaining popularity. It's a library that's written on top of PyTorch to abstract away some of the aspects of PyTorch and make it even easier. Um, and then we have MXNet, um, which is uh, another uh, machine learning framework that's kind of over here on the training side. And there are a lot of other frameworks that I've left out here. There are um, more abstractions on top, on top of TensorFlow that comes in the form of, of Keras. Uh, you have frameworks like Cafe um, and, and many more. And of course, any frameworks that you love um, that maybe I'm not talking about in this video, feel free to drop in the comments and we can we can talk about them there. So the next step is uh, intermediary framework. So once your training is complete, you'll have a model that's in 
one of these frameworks and if you're going to put it into an application you probably want to work on converting it um, so you can work on converting models through different frameworks so uh, this this framework in, that i consider to be an intermediate framework is onyx onyx is intermediary because it's sort of like a um, general framework that's able to convert uh, between all the other ones and the reason that's the case is onyx has um, been working very hard to be able to support all the operations um, that are present in all the different different frameworks. So it's able to communicate, like for example, a ReLU function in PyTorch and translate that so it can execute in the same way in TensorRT. And so these individual operations are usually where, as you're going through these conversions, you're going to run into trouble because you might be on one version where a certain operation like hard swish or the mish CUDA activation function is activated in this one framework, but you know, this, this function hasn't quite been implemented yet in another one. And that's where you're going to run into the tensions. But Onyx is a really nice framework because it has a lot of that stuff supported, has a lot of versions where they're running through everything. And, you know, going through Onyx is usually a pretty, a pretty safe bet. Oftentimes though, you'll be able to jump straight from your training framework into your deployment framework. And so what are these, uh, what are these deployment frameworks um, built to do? So, so you have uh, your training done, now you want to deploy into an application. The deployment framework is going to be heavily optimized to run on the hardware that you want to run on. This means that it can run at a higher frames per, per second if you're working in computer vision, or you can just have a, a you know, faster inference time um, if, you're, if you're working in, on the NLP side of things. And this is very important because it utilizes your hardware resources more efficiently. And, you know, also it's just uh, feels cleaner and makes your application run uh, a little bit faster. So uh, one of these frameworks is TensorFlow Lite. This is a mobile version of TensorFlow. So usually you'll be going through TensorFlow, like a save graph model in TensorFlow into a TF Lite model. Um, the other one is CoreML. This one is uh, designed particularly for iOS. Um, then you have OpenVINO. Um, OpenVINO is uh, from Intel and it's designed to run on CPU hardware as well as Intel's VPUs, which VPUs are uh, stand for vision processing units. Um, and then the last one I have here is TensorRT, which is NVIDIA's um, uh, framework designed specifically for GPU inference. So TensorRT is probably has the crown in the game right now for being able to just actually push the very limits of the fastest way to run certain state-of-the-art networks. That said, it is pretty opaque and oftentimes the GPU technology uh, required to run the TensorRT is often quite expensive. So for your given use case, you know, if you're going to mo mobile, you're definitely going to want to think about TensorFlow Lite or CoreML. And if you're thinking about going to, you know, the fastest possible speed, you can think about OpenVINO and TensorRT, and there might be some kind of uh, cost trade-off. And of course, it's always good to run experiments on your model in multiple places, and also to think about running different models, because um, if you're willing to go back a few versions and models, you can usually get uh, better implementations and better conversion pipelines to get uh, from where the research is being done over here on the training side. Uh, you, can, you can back up a little bit and find ways that people have eventually found ways to port the models over into this other side here on the right. And um, that's that's kind of one, one way to think about it. Um, lastly here, I just want to kind of touch on some of this hardware that I didn't, didn't talk about. We talked about the VPUs, Vision Processing Unit. Those are inference only for OpenVINO. Um, the GPUs are used for uh, speedy inference as well as speedy training time. So for example, like PyTorch and FastAI these kind of things are going to be running on GPUs for training time, which is going to run uh, their training a lot faster. And then you have TPUs, which are tensor processing units, uh, specifically not designed for, for TensorFlow. And um, oftentimes, I feel like a lot of people are using TensorFlow in CPUs and GPUs and kind of thinking that it's, it's not great. Well, that's usually because the, it's specifically de designed for uh, the TPU to get its kind of maximum performance. And, and so if you're if you're really into a TensorFlow uh, framework and you're you're really in that space, you should definitely think about 
um, adding TPUs into your pipeline. And then lastly, there's the normal CPU um, that we're used to using, um, and that will be optimized with, with OpenVINO. And occasionally people will train on CPU, and that's nice, especially if you need to scale training procedures, but typically training is best done on TPUs or GPUs. And then the last thing I wanted to mention here is I, I distinguish Onyx as an intermediary framework. A nice thing about Onyx is that it also has runtimes. So if you're not able to get out of Onyx or you wanna to try to use Onyx uh, as your deployment framework, you can actually just stop there and you can deploy into Onyx runtime on GPU or Onyx runtime on CPU. And you can actually use things like an FPGA for, for Onyx. And Onyx is really sort of this like all encompassing framework that sits on top of this whole, um, this whole infrastructure. So I hope you got a lot out of the video today. And uh, I'm glad you joined me here today to talk about machine learning frameworks. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, I highly encourage you to uh, subscribe below to the RoboFlow YouTube channel. And uh, we'll see you in the next video.